Sheffield's my life. It's um, where I brought up, it's where my friends are. You know, it's, 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 it's the most beautiful city on earth and um, it's, it's a place I would never want to leave for, for any great length of time. And it, it is, it's just a, a, a wondrous city and I love it. I always just assumed that I would just make a living out of drawing cartoons. I didn't realise actually that cartoonists don't make a living. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a very well paid pastime uh, at best. So uh, for, for about uh, 15 years or whatever, I was uh, 10 years, I was making a part time living out of car, a cartoon and doing greeting card designs and, and odd bits and bobs publishing magazines and newspapers. But nothing sort of broke broke further than that really. But then I, I came I came out, I thought, well, if I, if I could sort of create a style that was cartoon-esque, but could be painted, uh, then that, that would just move the things on a little bit further for me. There's a lot more respect given to artists than there are to cartoonists, even though they're both an art form. Uh, the general public perceive art as a painted medium, hung on a wall, and can afford a certain price tag. I, I wanted to basically try and find a way of sort of blurring the two and when I came, uh, came through a series of doodling uh, this one character that didn't have any expression and that was the key to that was not the expression, taking the expression out of the, the drawing stopped it being a cartoon, it became a figurative study then and then I realised that that's, that was the way that I could take my cartoon, love of cartooning into a whole new medium and into fine art The little events in life are the most important things sometimes, you know, that, that kind of lost afternoon in a pub um, is just as magical as, as going for a two week holiday in, um, in Benidorm, you know, it's, it's, you, there's, there's so much about life that's, that's small and it isn't, it's, it's little details and they're, they're the things that we can connect to more, we can connect more to simply um, two kids under a lamp post um, at eight o'clock in the evening and the sun's going down and you know you're going to get called in by your mum. Probably connect more to that than say um, the Silver Jubilee in 1970, whatever, you know what I mean? This is, it's, it's the little things, it's the, it's the tag up on the back of a, a shirt that I like. I like that in, imperfections in people rather than, than anything else, you know. So I like that and you know, I'll, if I paint paint uh, an ante where with a with a sleeveless dress there's always going to be a bra strap that's kind of slipped down sort of thing it's it's those little kind of imperfections in life that are, i find quite beautiful a lot of my work's autobiographical so without that upbringing i would have wouldn't have anything to paint about and i don't think well i, I, I sense i don't I would have had the same kind of um, stories to tell if I was kind of brought up in a little village, shall we say, outside Homefirth or something like that, or, you know, so, so to have, have that working class city upbringing, major city upbringing, it was vital. It, it totally shaped what I do as an artist. For me, uh, it's, it, it's an exciting environment to live in. There's, there's no flat lands. It's, there isn't a, a real clear horizon to ever see, so there's always something around the next corner you've got to look for, in a sense, and you know, walking up all these hills and stuff. And so it's, it's got a very, it's a very physical city to live in, you know, these, you have to put some effort into walking anywhere. And um, you've got these, it's, it's a city of buildings and of trees, so it, it's a very um, visceral environment, definitely. The thing is, is, is when certain architecture like that's gone, the, the memories are stronger and you, you feel um, a lot more love for those particular buildings that actually weren't there when, when, they, was, when they were stood up. You know, like say for the hole in the road, it, it, it was demolished or filled in at the right time because it, from what I, my last memories of the hole in the road, it smelled too weird and it was dangerous, you know, as a, as a kid. Uh, at the time when it was built, it was revolutionary. It was featured on postcards that you sent to aunties and uncles and stuff. You know, every, the city was proud of the hole in the road and what it stood for and the fish tank and everything. It was a, it was a bright, imaginative piece of public architecture, really, you know. Uh, but it, 
it had its day and it had to go and the same with the, the wedding cake in some respects so the wedding cake I feel could still stand today and, and not be too much out of place it's still a, it is a striking piece of architecture and I'm, you know it really is and it's the same with like kind of the um, the kettle drums I, I like those and I like the street cheese grater uh, car park there are certain pieces of um, public architecture that are good, you know, and, and, and are nice and should stay where in, in Sheffield and not get knocked down. But certain things like the egg boxes, were, it wasn't a particularly pretty building, so for it to go is, is, is fine by me, and, you know. It's lost its purpose and it's, it's, not, um, and it's not a pretty thing, whereas with certain, certain modern architecture can, can quite happily live in a city like this. Sheffield's still trying to build itself up and still bringing in new pieces of work, like say the cheese grater car park for instance, and it's, it's something that you probably find in Barcelona and get plaudits and, and you know, and uh, awards because it's in, in Sheffield, it's, it's just a wacky building. But it's good, it's good that the, you know, these things uh, are built in Sheffield, definitely. Mm -hmm.